Hello, welcome to my tutorial on how to modify the Xcode project managed by Unity with an editor extension using c -sharp code. For this tutorial, we'll modify the deployment orientation for the app when running on an iPad. The methods I'll illustrate here can be easily adjusted to make other changes to the main info.p list that Xcode uses to set up the app for deployment. This tutorial assumes a reasonable familiarity with Unity, c -sharp, Objective-C, iOS programming, and Xcode. Let's get started by creating a new project in Unity. As with my other tutorials, we'll add a spinning cube to the scene so we can see the code running when we build on our target device. Before we add any assets, switch the build target platform to iOS. Click File, Build Settings, then click on iOS in the platform list, and finally click Switch Platform. With that done, now in the hierarchy view, click Create, and then 3D object, then cube. Now, in the project view, create a folder called scenes and a folder called scripts. Inside the scripts folder, create a folder called editor. This is where we're going to put our post build script. Click scripts and right click in the asset subview and create a new C sharp script called spin cube. Double click the new script to open it in your editor and add the following lines public float speed equals 30f. In your update routine, add the following transform.rotate speed times time dot delta time comma two times speed times time dot delta time comma minus speed times time dot delta time. Return to Unity and drag the script onto the cube object. So now when you run the project or when it runs on our target platform, it will slowly spin. Add another C sharp script to our scripts folder called iOS Extra Properties. Double click this new script to open it in your editor and make the following modifications. In the using section at the top of the file, add these lines. Hash if unity underscore editor using unity editor. Hash end if. We need to include the editor module, but only if we're building or running in the editor. So it's wrapped in a conditional block. Insert the attribute, execute in edit mode before our class definition. This means certain class methods will be called in the editor even if we're not in play mode. Add two public bools, one of which is static. Public bool m underscore ipad underscore enable landscape. Public static bool ipad landscape enable. The non-static var will show up in the inspector, allowing it to be changed directly with the editor UI, while the static var will be used by our post build script to determine how to modify our info.plist file. We now need a method to copy the non-static var into the static var, and we'll use onValidate to do this. OnValidate is called on a class marked as execute in edit mode when something in the editor changes. Add these lines. Private void onValidate. iPad landscape enabled equals m underscore iPad underscore enable landscape. Now we need to add code that will only be run on our target device when we start up and enable landscape rotation if we're on an iPad and our flag is set to true. Add the following lines. Private void awake. iPad landscape enable equals m underscore iPad underscore enable landscape. Debug.log is iPad plus is iPad. If is iPad and and iPad landscape enable screen dot auto rotate to landscape left equals true screen dot auto rotate to landscape right equals true debug dot log landscape plus screen dot auto rotate to landscape left as on validate will not run on the target device and static variables are not serialized we need to copy the non static property value to our static copy we use a bool var is ipad to determine if we're running on an ipad or not right now that's not defined so let's add it using a getter method. Static bool underscore is iPad equals false. Static bool underscore iPad test equals false. Public static bool is iPad. Get if not underscore iPad test hash if unity underscore iOS string iOS device equals unity engine dot iOS dot device dot generation dot to string debug.log device plus iOS device underscore is iPad equals iOS device dot to lower dot contains iPad hash end if underscore iPad test equals true 
return underscore is iPad. This code works by searching for the string iPad in the device generation name. We make sure the name is all lowercase before we search. We also cache the result in a static bool for future checks and set another static bool to indicate that the cached result is valid. Finally, go back and wrap the awake method in a conditional block that will be true if we're not in the editor by using hash if not unity underscore editor. This stops the awake method being executed when a scene containing our script is loaded in the editor. Now it's time to create the method that will be executed after the project is built in Unity, but before Xcode starts its own build process. In the script slash editor folder, create a new C sharp script called iOS post process build and double click it to open it in the editor. Add the following lines to the using block at the top of the file using Unity Editor, using Unity Editor dot callbacks, using Unity Editor dot iOS dot Xcode. Remove the start and update methods as we'll not use these. Now we'll create a public static method that will be called by the Unity build process, but we'll need to mark it with the post process build attribute. Add the following lines. Post process build, public static void, change Xcode P list, build target, build target, comma, string path to build project. Const string iPad orientations equals UI supported interface orientations tilde iPad. Debug.log build target plus build target. Debug.log path plus path to build project. If build target equals equals build target dot iOS. The build target must be iOS for this to work, while the passed in path var will be the fully qualified path to the Xcode project. For testing purposes, both pass vars are dumped to the console, so you can see what they are. You can remove these debug lines later if you want. Inside the if statement, we'll add the following block of code. String plist path equals path to built project plus quotes slash info dot plist. plist document plist equals new plist document. plist dot read from file plist path. plist element dict root equals plist dot root. If iOS extra properties dot iPad landscape enable debug dot log adding landscape for iPad plist element array arr equals new plist element array r dot add string UI interface orientation portrait r dot add string UI interface orientation portrait upside down r dot add string UI interface orientation landscape left R dot add string UI interface orientation landscape right root iPad orientations equals R else debug dot log removing iPad entries root iPad orientations equals no plist dot write to file plist path first we read the info dot plist file into a plist document and get a reference to the root dictionary so we can manipulate it. The const string defined earlier is the value of the dictionary entry that holds the enabled orientations for the iPad version. Then, depending on the value of the static version of the landscape enable var, we're either going to add a new array to our iPad orientation element or remove it entirely. Finally, we write the modified plist back to the original location. Now, switch back to Unity and after letting it compile the changes, highlight the iOS Extra Properties script and drag it onto the main camera. If you highlight the main camera, you'll see the bool check in the inspector for the script. Go ahead and check it, and behind the scenes, Unity will trigger the onValidate method and the static copy will be updated. We don't need to do anything with the iOS post process build script. The static method will be called automatically because we marked it with a post process build attribute and because the script file is in a folder called editor. This is considered a special folder name in Unity as the location for all editor extensions. Save the current scene to our scene folder, I called mine test scene, and open the build settings window again. Click add open scene and then player settings. Under the resolution and presentation selection, make sure the default orientation is set to auto rotation, while only portrait and portrait upside down are checked under allied orientations for auto rotation. Press Command-B to build and run the project. When Unity completes, 
you'll see the debug messages in the console from the post build script. And if you now switch to Xcode, you can see where the orientations for iPhone and iPad have been set and are different. If you were to uncheck the property of our iOS Extra property script, then both iPad and iPhone will use the same orientation settings. That's how you create a post build script for Unity to modify the info.p list of the associated Xcode project. This can be used to make changes that Unity does not normally do, such as increment a build number or even add a custom display name. As always, please follow me on Twitter or visit my blog. You can see the addresses on the screen in the text below. I've also posted this tutorial code directly onto GitHub, which is also linked below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.